Well, guys, here we are again <laughs> in my kitchen shooting a video. Um, as you can tell by the title, I said that this is going to be a video about something cool that Knife Center does that I forgot about. So, in case you guys don't know, when you order things from Knife Center, you get points for certain purchases. You get points and you can use those points to get stuff. So, let's get ready. Turn down the volume in your headphones because here comes the music. KnifeCenter.com is one of the two big retailers of online knives. And I know you guys are like, this is supposed to be a knife review about a cold steel that you picked up. Well, it is, but it's a twofold thing. I hadn't been on KnifeCenter.com for a very long time, and I had bought some stuff. There, every once in a while, there's stuff you can get on KnifeCenter.com at a price that is better than some of the other vendors. Um, a lot of times, the two big ones that I will use if I'm ordering something is Amazon, and if not there, I go to Blade HQ. Because, I mean, really, Blade HQ has got a, a bigger selection, to tell you the truth. However, KnifeCenter.com actually has a really good selection, and sometimes, you can, like I said, you can find things there that you can't find other places. Well, I went in to KnifeCenter.com completely forgetting that I had purchased stuff there in the past, because all I was looking for was to see if they were still selling the stonefish or if they were sold out. I was just curious. And I realized I got like $80 worth of, I got $80 worth of points that I could turn into a $50 gift card. So I took that gift card and I turned it into something I'd wanted for a while. I had the old, you, this is the safe maker. I had the peacekeeper, the old peacekeeper, which was a double-sided, double-edged, not chisel ground, uh, push dagger. Well, that push dagger was uncomfortable at best in hand and it had some, it's had some issues with, I didn't like the way it retained and things like that. And it was just too big. It was too big, too broad, stood up too proud. And I thought, you know what? I like cold steel and I like having a push dagger. They are, they're handy to have around depending on whether you're legally allowed to carry them or not. And so I decided to go ahead and order it because it's, these are unique. These are a little bit different than a lot of the other push daggers. So what we're going to do right now is we're gonna turn around and look at it. Well, not right now, but let's go back to the knife center thing. That, eh, you know what, we'll take care of that at the end. Let's go ahead and take a look at the knife. All right, guys, so let's take a look at this. What is it exactly that we're looking at? Now, that flash light, I'm gonna explain that to you guys a little bit later, because I used Patreon money for something that was actually channel related. I, I always, I, a lot of times I do. Okay, so this is the Cold Steel Safe Maker 1. So you guys know a lot of times Cold Steel will make two different sizes of things. Safe Maker 1 is the larger version. Safe Maker 2 is a little bit smaller, and then they have some other smaller ones like the Urban Powell and things like that. So we have a 4.5 inch blade made out of AUS 8A steel, OS 8A. Um, 3 ounce weight with a blade thickness 5 millimeters and a handle, 2 inch Kratex handle. Now, this is what you get. Now, as you guys know, I'm not a fan of this Curex sheath, uh, but the fact is this knife's not really necessary going to pose problems with the edge, like some of them in and out of this sheath with the crate, with this Curex. My problem with Curex is there's fiberglass. It's fiberglass embedded when you, when you, pull, your, when you uh, pull your knife out of the sheath, you dull the edge sometimes. Now, so here you go with your safe maker and I'm not gonna lie, it's an attractive knife. They did a really good job with the stone wash on this. It's a good stone wash. You can still see some of the grind lines. Um, the grind on this one, let's turn around and look. The grind on this one is not too inconsistent. I've had issues with some of the cold steel knives coming with an inconsistent grind on the blade. Uh, it came 
fairly sharp. It didn't come as sharp as I would have wanted it, and the tip is a little rounded. But the difference about this one is, oops, sorry, I kicked the tripod. The difference on this one that is very easy to spot, which is different than the one I had before, is this back. This back is hollowed. You can see ever so slightly. Let me see if I can get a better focus. Work with me. Work with me. All I want you to do is just focus. So you can see it's hollow ground in here. So when you are sharpening, you can sharpen and then just knock the burr off the edge. And you can see I did do a little bit of sharpening. Now, I will say that the grind on it was a little inconsistent. You can see how it's it's definitely got some hiccups as to how the edge was ground on the tip. But fact is, this is a $50 knife. And uh, now that I do make knives and things like that, I am a little more forgiving knowing how difficult some of those things can be. So what you have is a full four and a half inch boot knife style blade that's in a smaller package, easily to, easy to carry. This actually does carry real comfortable. Uh, you see cold steel, made in Taiwan, OS 8, and you can see the grind pattern on the back. It, it is attractive. Now the thing about this that's different than the other one I had is this Kratex handle goes all the way down to here as opposed to just stopping at this handle. And that is rounded over and it's really comfortable. It does not hurt your hands like the other one did. Uh, draws nice and easy. And it does cut well. I already cut a couple things with it. That chisel ground blade with that hollow, it does cut well. Um, but the problem is that this is a this is a one-dimensional blade. It's kind of cool to have, but it truly is really one-dimensional. Um, it's 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 this goes into that realm of things that could be considered making a knife into predominantly a weapon. There's not a lot of utilitarian things you can do with this. This is push dagger, punch dagger, some people call it, but it is a very well-made knife. And so, just to elaborate on that there's a lot of people that say i don't like cold steel or you're just a hater on cold steel the first thing that i went looking for was this knife it was a cold steel i went looking for this knife in particular when i realized i had 50 dollars worth of points just to see if it was in that price range now the nice thing about this one as opposed to the other one it doesn't make much contact the blade doesn't actually touch this secure x sheath very much and it's got this retention uh, this cutout where the where the blade actually can can grab and squeeze here as opposed to the other one it just kind of sat in the middle and when you got it in the blade would would rub in and out of the sheath on the on this curex and this one does not so not as big of a problem so you do have a full uh, securex sheath with nicely made with a lot of lashing loops and things like that also has a pocket clip that if it's like the other one was, I believe you can remove this. I hadn't tried it yet. Um, yes, that is a removable pocket clip. You can take that out if you want and then just lash it to your gear. Uh, it's just a matter of pushing it on. I just can't. I'm at the wrong angle to do it. At any rate, yes, it is a removable pocket clip. Um, so it's a really, really well-made push dagger. So let's, took it, let's turn around and we'll talk about it some more the other direction now that we've looked at it up close and personal. So why would somebody want one of these knives? Let me tell you why. <laughs> I can tell you exactly why I purchased mine the first one I owned. Um, I had recently had shoulder surgery. Actually, I got it in prep. I knew I was gonna be in sling for weeks. Literally, I was in a sling for six or eight weeks. Uh, I had torn this shoulder completely apart, had to have basically two surgeries back to back within a matter of a week. They actually left the holes plugged so that they could go right back in and and uh, not have to worry about reopening the same holes to go in and do more work. So I was, I was pretty laid up. My right arm was in a sling for a long time. And while I've taken martial arts and things like that, you all know that the dexterity you have in your hands is definitely different. I carried this strictly as a weak hand tool. I did not have this yet. I had not purchased this yet, um, which is easily as good of an item. So what I got was I got the his peacekeeper the peacekeeper one it was a big wide broad like five inch blade wait it was significantly larger than this one 
um, leaf style dagger blade and I got it specifically because it was something that I could carry for a defensive purpose without having to do there's not a lot of training required for this this is a you pull it out and you just punch it in this is for close quarters stick it in pull it out and hopefully that minimizes the threat and removes the threat but I had it and then I got rid of it I sold it and then I saw that they had these and I'm like you know what I want to see one of these I liked the look of these when they first came out but I already had the other one and so I wanted to see how it carried how it felt different and it definitely has a completely different feel uh, the the other punch dagger or, or push dagger that I had like I said had a square shank or square handle that came down that it was a it was broader across it was a broader blade and then it came down and this was square and there was no rubber covering that square handle so with this one it's it's much much more rounded everything's covered super comfortable super super comfortable it it fits well the other one did not feel comfortable in a in this grip it was always just this which you know it's just a matter of preference but the other one never stayed sharp and like I said, a lot of that had to do with the sheath. This one, I'm not seeing that issue. It's the same type of sheath. If I was to drag this on it, I would dull it on that fiberglass reinforced plastic, but I'm not seeing the same issues in and out of the sheath that I was having. This is still really sharp. Now I did touch it up. I didn't like the edge, but I don't, it's just on, just on the verge of being sliced, paper sliced. Um, but it has that weird chisel ground edge, which makes it a little bit different. Now, let's talk about some of the problems I found with it. Like I already said, the grind on it, one side's kicked over and the other, uh, and then you have this typical of cold steel. This grind comes down, the edge terminates here, but then let's pause. And I meant to show you this on the other side, but let me pause you guys and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. You have this, where this plunge just terminates. And this this has been, this plunge terminates here and then there's a big dull spot and then it ramps up. Why, why couldn't you have ground this just all the way back to about here and put a sharpening notch in there? Because this, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this gets really irritating, especially as a sharpener. That tears stones up. When you start slamming into that and then you have that, that area right here where it's just not sharp. Okay, see what I'm saying? Now, as you can see, the edge goes from being sharp, and it, this probably does need touched up a little bit. I'm seeing some burr on it. Um, the edge goes from being sharp, and then right about here, you lose your edge. And then it's just, that's just dull. That's not sharp at all. All the way, like a thumb's width. So you're actually losing that much cutting edge just because they didn't terminate this and cut in a notch, which is something I'm probably gonna do. This side is actually even worse. Look at how far out it comes on this side. Are these little, are these little picky any things maybe that I'm, that I'm throwing out there? Well, maybe they are. Maybe they are little picky any things that, that, that only, you know, pertain to me, but this is my channel and this is why you guys are gonna hear the things. People are like, oh, you're always bitching and complaining about this and that, this and that, just buy the knife and live with it. Well, that's not the point of this channel. This never has been the point of this channel. The point of this channel is the things that bother me in certain knives are probably the same things that are bothering other people. And I can't say it's just cold steel. I love cold steel. People are like, oh, you just hate cold steel. You just hate on them. No. If you go back and you find the video where people are like the, what was the, the one? Uh, you remember when cold steel made quality knives? Uh, Pepperidge Farms remembers. I said specifically there, cold steel has been one of my favorite knife companies for a very long time. I'm hoping to get to talk to Lynn Thompson in Portland and let him know, you know, hey, the knives that you make have been, have been great. They're, they're amazing. I carried, I carried an SRK a, as a combat knife. I carried a Recon Tonto. Were they perfect? No, they were big and thick and bulky. And that's kind of where the, the stonefish evolved from was the things that I had that, that I carried that, did I like them? Yeah, are they cool? Yeah, but were they exactly what I needed? No, but that leads, you know, they're not the only one. This knife has the exact same thing. This is that. K bar, TDI, all K bars are like this. It's not just cold steel. So I don't want you guys to think I'm just hating on cold steel. I truly, if you judge it by how many knives I've owned, 
by a single brand. Cold Steel has to be my favorite brand, hands down. I've owned more Cold Steel knives than I have of all other knife companies' brands combined, unless you count crappy little $12, $15 dollar knives that I got from, uh, from a mail-in catalog uh, that were uh, United Cutlery and things like that. And you guys saw that video where I talked about some of the crappy knives that I bought when I was younger that are still the oldest knives I have in my collection outside of the little knife my dad got for me. Do I regret those knives? No, that's what led me into the knife world. So don't think I'm just hating on cold steel. I actually love cold steel. And the fact is people are like, oh, they're over the top marketing. I'm like, man, if you can do it, market it. Who's gonna, who's gonna argue with you about the, the robustness of your knives if you're punching them through car hoods and car doors and breaking windows and stuff like that with them? The pry test, I mean, you can't argue it. And the fact is, you don't see other companies doing it. You know why? I don't know if they, I don't know if they trust their product enough to do it. I, I mean, I know a few knives that would hold up to those testings, but you know, that Lynn made a, a name for himself that way. So I don't want you to think that this is just me bashing on cold steel. So that's, I mean, that's the whole thing about this knife. Like I said, this knife is 100% something that you would carry as a secondary knife that would require little to no training, something that's just grab and, glow, grow, ah, grab and go. And the other thing about this knife is there is no way, unless you lose consciousness, that you're gonna lose control of that knife. It is in your hand. You can't pry that knife out of my hand. You can't knock that knife out of my hand. It's not gonna get stuck and then it slips out of my hand. I have positive, positive control of this. And if you are in a self-defense situation, this is going to lay devastating waste on your opponent. But I'm usually not in the market for something like that. And I'm not 100% sure about the legalities of where, to, where you can carry it and where you can't. So just be careful if you get one. I just said, this is, it's just something cool that I knew I could get when I saw the price. I knew I could get it if it was in stock at the $50 mark. I could get it with the gift card that I got on KnifeCenter.com. So one of the, that's the cool thing about KnifeCenter.com. You can get purchase points and use them and turn them into a free knife. So don't forget about your points. So now the last thing, I um, got my Patreon payout and I realized I've noticed that I complain a lot about lighting and I have to shoot at certain times throughout the day um, when lighting is going to be preferential. Uh, I can't really shoot at night out there in, at the table if I decide that you know eight, nine o'clock at night I wanna do a, a video. I can't really do it because lighting is bad. So um, this month Patreon came. And I used it to purchase a couple things for the channel. I use your guys' Patreon money, since it's not enough to go on the trip, like I keep saying, if you want me to go to if you want me to go to Chris Reeve Knives or up to Mattia Brani Cutlery, I've got to get more, we've got to put more money in the Patreon. But what it did purchase us is this light that we currently are using. Here's the controls for it. If you watch, we're gonna change the colors. Some reddish yellow. There's the all, all white, and then this is the bluish white. But when I turn it off, definitely better, more consistent lighting. I know you definitely saw it when we were looking at the knife hands down from the back camera. So what I bought was, I gotta take you guys out of tripod. Bear with me, I'm gonna pause. So I am using this unsupported. This is a ring light. It's a USB powered ring light. It has several different lighting settings. And I think that this is going to make a welcome addition to the things I have for the channel because it gives me good diffuse lighting. So if any of you guys ever wonder why YouTube creators put up and start up Patreons, it's for things like this. This, I don't have a studio with lighting and things like that. I gotta purchase some of these things. I can't go and use lighting from other places. I basically either was stuck waiting until ambient light was the way I wanted it, or I purchased this. Now, the thing is, I didn't have to break the bank on this. And I'm gonna tell you right now, this is a, what was the brand? It is a U-B-E-E-S-I-Z-E. -E -E. So it's U-B size. That's, that's, it's U, B size and uh, it was like 37 bucks on Amazon and it came with the tripod it came with that and then I purchased a new remote and it's still not great um, I'm thinking I'm gonna just stick with using my uh, 
my watch, my Apple watch. But you know, we try these things, YouTube creators, we try these things and we try to make our channels better and things like that. And that's, I don't want you guys to think that I'm trying to turn this into like, hey, I wanna make all my money on YouTube. It's not. What I wanna do is sharpen y'all's knives. So with that being said, I believe I'm going to run a fall special for a little bit. Um, I might get that put together where I'm going to offer a discount on sharpening and that would be a good chance for you guys. I think I'm going to do what I did last time, save any edge adjustments and specialty items. This would be considered a specialty item, uh, double edge, tontos, things like that. I'm going to go ahead and just make the announcement now. Let's say from now until the end of November. So this is, it's just, the, today's the 15th, the middle of October to the middle of November. We'll go 15 to 15. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna do a fall special and everything will be the price of a standard sharpening so if you send me a double-edged as long as I'm not having to do any repair you're looking at $35 for Tonto's recurves things like that and then $25 for all other things all the way up to 12,000 grit guys that's like a $10 savings per knife so with that being said this is the end of the video guys I love you guys if you like the videos give them a thumbs up if you don't give them a thumbs down this corner is going to be a Patreon link, the one I just talked about. Like I said, I want to go on these trips and do things for you. Speaking of trips, before we go any further into Patreon, I will come back to that. I will be gone next weekend, the weekend of the 25th, 26th, 27th. I will be gone, and then I'm back the 28th, 29th, 30th, and then I leave for Portland from the 31st until, I think, the 5th because I'm going to Blade Show West. So I'm gonna be at Cali Custom Show, then the following weekend, I'm gonna be at Blade Show West, then I'm back for a week, and then I have to go to my daughter's ice skating thing in Washington State. Which is a nice little segue into what we're gonna finish talking about at the end. Patreon, like I said, four trips that you would like to see me go. Mattia Barani Cutlery, I don't think would be that hard. That would be a day up, maybe crash somewhere up there and then come back. But to go to uh, Idaho, definitely we gotta fund that with some Patreon. Up here is going to be a subscription link. If you are on a phone, make sure that you have it set for the proper level of notification you want. If you want to get all my stuff, set it for all. If you only want part, set it for part. If you're on a phone, you got to make sure notifications are enabled. Over here is going to be a video that YouTube thinks you like. And down here is going to be a link to Ashton's channel or Blade Banner. I think I should do Blade Banner this time because I've done Ashton's channel twice. So, uh, And Dave actually did a review of the Stonefish. You don't necessarily agree with everything he said, but that's just the way it works because most of y'all don't agree with everything I say here. So you guys go find David's channel there, Blade Banner, and like I said, he did a review of that, but he also does a lot of other reviews. So he does have a lot of stuff, and I'm looking forward to getting to see Dave up there at the Portland show. So guys, that's it. I love you all. I'll see you later. I got stuff I've got to try and do tonight. I want to shoot another video, but I'm not sure that I'm going to have time. We're definitely going to try. Take it easy. It's Tuesday right now. Tomorrow's my daughter's birthday, so don't expect to see a lot of activity from me tomorrow. But I will try and get another video up today. Just take it easy. I'll see you in the next video.